I think you all realize at this point, I love people throwing large rocks at other groups of people. I also like people who go through and personally dismantle the heroes of physical combat. I also like drastic shows of power. And I also really like characters who are built up for years. Yeah, it's Maduro Uchiha. AKA the person who was supposed to be the final villain. Don't at me. Maduro's way better villain than Kaguya. Just more built up and just better. Please do not... <sighs> Alright, anyway, whatever. Why is Maduro an amazing example of breaking the meta? It's because he took everything the series had established so far, absorbed it, and elevated it. I'm not kidding at all. Let me fanboy for a minute. Or maybe a few. Fire jutsu. Okay, a fireball. Maybe of a decent size. Alright, may cover a whole building top. Okay, you're looking pretty good. Nah, Majestic Destroyer Flame, requiring an entire platoon of water users to stop it. The Sharingan? Garbage. The Mangekyo Sharingan? Alright, maybe. Internal Mangekyo Sharingan? Okay, now you're getting somewhere. Oh, and by the way, that's a pre-evolution to the Rinnegan. And by the way, the Rinnegan can drop meteors. Taijutsu? Oh, you can take on a few people. You're alright. Maybe bust through a wall or two. Strongest Taijutsu user, my guy. No, take on the whole army by yourself, solely with Taijutsu, and use their own weapons against them. Susano, oh, okay, maybe you can take up an entire bridge, you know, it follows the user's movement by their feet. Never mind, let's make it a hundred times bigger, give it the capability to fly, with legs, and a sword that with air pressure alone can slice apart mountains. Oh, with the summoning jutsu you can summon some dogs, some birds, maybe even some giant toads. Nah, how about summoning the strongest tailed beast on command and instantly subjugating it with your base Sharingan? Sage mode? No, that weak thing? Oh, he didn't even need to activate it himself. He just stole it from his best friend, annihilated the Hokage while blind, and then got six past Sage Mode. Even crazier version of regular Sage Mode. Okay, with some high tier regeneration, you may be able to close up a gaping hole, fix a lung or two, close some cuts. Nah, let me regrow my entire torso and arm instantly. Yo, know, you know, being the Ten Tails Jean Jerky, it's pretty cool. Alright, that's nice. You got some gray skin, some extreme power, but you do lose your mental cap capabilities at first and have some struggles. Can't even really use your unique ability anymore. Nah, perfect Jean Jerky. First try, first full power, Ten Tails, no mental struggles, and amp special abilities. Okay, sure, you got your unique abilities. An internal black flame here, some mind controlling jutsu there. How about one where you manifest clones of yourself that are practically just as powerful as you in another dimension, which no one can see without running on powers? And. One-shot tailed beasts. Seriously, Moder is amazing simply for the fact that he does everything and he does it so well. Even Moder's hype buildup was meta-breaking. Not to talk of the character himself. We first saw Moder in the first fight between Sasuke and Naruto in the Valley of the End, and the actual character was not introduced until years later in real time. We always heard about the old generations. We always heard that they were the true alphas of the Shinobi world, and the current generation was weak. We had examples of this, Sani and Kakashi's father, who was even greater than them. Heck, even as an old man, Hiruzen was stated to still be the strongest of the living Kage. The first Hokage was always stated to have such legendary power, and was extremely dangerous. Even so, there was always small talk about Hashirama's rival. A name drop here, a remembrance there, someone so powerful that his very name, and the, or even the idea of him, struck fear into the strongest of the modern shinobi world. What will always get me personally is when Minato, one of the strongest and fastest shinobi of all time, takes on a 14-year-old Obito before he even really fights him and instantly asks, Are you Madara Uchiha? Now no, if this were the case, Madara would be in his 110s, and still, Minato could think of no one else who could perform the feats that Obito did. That is actually insane. Of course, when you realize that 14-year-old Obito is actually nothing to the real Madara, that's even crazier. Obito had information on sealing techniques, Kage level protection barriers, a control over Genjus who's strong enough to subjugate the Nine Tails instantly, and had a scary match with Minato that Minato only survived because he could teleport. And Madara could have done that fight what and won while blind. Continuing, the fact that Obito actually took up the mantle of Madara and truly terrified everyone, including the viewer, is amazing. Any character that even has a mantle is extremely impressive, but any character whose subordinates double as some of the most strong strongest characters in the series are actually legendary. No, the very idea of Madara shook Tsunade so much that she was almost confident in the fact that Madara Obito was immortal and unbeatable. Note, this Tsunade had all the Kage, all the nations, thousands upon thousands of warriors, and the two strongest tailed beasts contained within powerful Jinjuriki on command, and was still confident she couldn't beat just Obito. And yes, Obito is nothing to Madara. Obito, War Arc Obito, in the White Mask, was ready to fight and defeat Sage Kabuto with a good chunk of the Akatsuki, including Itachi, a man Obito was confident he could have died to at one point, and he didn't care. He was ready to fight. However, the moment a weaker reanimated Madara even appeared and was not activated, Obito relented. The mere sight of his teacher in his prime made the strongest living shinobi at the time crumble in fear. That inherent presence in the series that Madara had before he even stepped a foot on the screen was amazing. 
honestly cannot name a better example of build-up to a character than Madara. I can also think of very few epic first fights that are on the level of Madara Uchiha. When Madara first appears, he looks like Kabuto, who claims he made Madara even stronger. Then he said one simple thing that blew my mind when I first read it. You knew what I was like in my glory days? This, this statement, that's a fantastic question, and Kabuto straight up admits that he doesn't know. And then Madara versus the Shinobi Alliance. It's beautiful. Way Madara drops down and he walks. He builds up to a full sprint and that is the entire fight. Build up. Never truly going all out. Always saving something extra. First, just the base Sharing Gun. Just the base Sharing Gun and he dismantles hundreds upon hundreds of Shinobi casually, dodging everything fluidly and using their own weapons against them. And the amazing thing is, he doesn't even need to. He hits a guy so hard he buries him into the ground, but still, he grabs weapons, swords, uses explosive tags and kunai that are thrown at him to take out a whole groups of people. Then he gets knocked back, but there is no damage. Then he just dusts off his shoulder and whips out the strongest and largest fire jutsu outside of Amaterasu itself and takes all the water style users in the platoon to stop his one jutsu. Then he just casually pulls out the Susano and begins tearing through every last shinobi around him, taking all the hits with absolutely no damage. Then, when Gara manages to pull him out, and Naruto throws a Rasen Shuriken, an attack that is a forbidden jutsu because it cuts people down on the cellular level, Madara just absorbs it. Then he realizes that, okay, there are some powerful people in this crowd of sheep, time to kill them all. And he drops a meteor, a gigantic meteor that turns the sky dark. And in this moment, this is when the power ceiling in the Naruto-verse broke. Gara literally asked, in terror and confusion, is this the power of a god? They just barely managed to stop it, and Madara just casually asked Anoki, a person he comes to respect after he stops the first meteor, what are you going to do about the second one? Then everybody falls, and those who live are practically dead already as Madara sends a forest to consume them all. And then Madara doesn't even bother stopping there. The five Kage, the supposed strongest, and the leaders of their respective villages come together to fight Madara, Madara views them as children. They never actually challenge Madara. They try everything, fusing jutsu, activating new techniques, activating old ones, sealing him, deatomizing him. They throw everything at Madara and none of it sticks. He's just dancing with the children, never once actually truly trying at his old level. He's literally just trying out new jutsu he just got because of Hashirama cells, wood clones, deep forest emergence, the flower fall on jutsu. The only sharing on base techniques he uses are Susano genjutsu and the Rinnegan absorption. Even then, he finds the current Kage so despicably weak that he doesn't even bother absorbing most of their jutsu, only Anoki's. Then, the instant he goes back to a true blue old favorite, something new to the audience, the perfect Susano, everyone loses it. And he proceeds to annihilate multiple mountains with the mere air pressure of him drawing his blade. He broke their will. He severely damaged it with the 25 Susano wood clones, admittedly. But the one thing that could smash all in existence that even rivaled the tailed beast, once that simply manifested, Akage realized they had lost the fight. And even then, there was no fight. It was just that they could not entertain Madara anymore. He got bored with them. The next step is when he just undoes the reanimation and decides he's not going to fight anyone outside of Hashirama. He literally sits down and waits. He doesn't really bother forcing Hashirama to fight. If you remember, I love antagonistic characters who sit down and just do nothing. But unlike Thanos, who's actually concerned for a living being, Madara is waiting because in the, with the eyes of the omnipotent, he saw through the pointless facade of time and the countless bloody battles that took place before him. He knew it was all formality and that his plan was coming full circle. It was fate in his eyes, and it went all his way. He beat Hashirama casually, was revived, got his running gun back, let Obito have his ten-tailed fun, then annihilated both EMS Sasuke and KCM2 Naruto while while blind, and, one while blind, and the other with only one running gun, and the amount of raw savagery that Madara just displays through his conquest of the tailed beast and the Kages is amazing, and now he's practically immortal, just as Tsunade forewarned. He even lets the might guy go eight gates and dances with him too. He lets himself get hit by the strongest attack of guys at that point and just regenerates. He's so undeniably alpha that when he's caught off guard by Sage Six past Naruto and Sasuke, he just rolls with it. There's still nothing. They steal his clone, Sasuke slices him in half, but it's all just formality. He uses Kamui, he gets his other Renegon, drops multiple meteors just as a distraction, and activates the infinite Sukiyomi. Then, for those who remain and resist it, he plans to take care of him himself. Even Naruto and Sasuke realize that he's all too capable of doing that, now that he has the third eye. Now, we're going to pause and go to Madara the character rather than Madara the living event. Madara Uchiha has one of the saddest backstories in Naruto. He was born into a war-torn world of shinobi slaughtering one another, fighting full-grown adults as a child and losing family members so often that the bloodshed became numbing. He was hollow until he met Hashirama. They didn't know who the other was. They were just two kids skipping rocks. Friends. Possibly the first and only one Madara ever had. They became close, but because of the world they lived in, the moment the truth was revealed, they had to separate and turn on each other. 
the pain of separation is, is of what the pain of separation of what was the only connection that Madara had outside his clan was so strong that it awakened his Sharingan. Then Toby Rama killed Izu, Izuna, his final sibling, and he was going blind from the man Gekio Sharingan. He had to take his beloved brother's eyes and carry the pain and hatred of his family and the countless Lady Uchiha all in his low-hanging head. Those eyes were a constant reminder of what he had lost. He and Hashirama reunited. They formed a treaty and a new bond, creating the Hidden Leaf. However, the continued oppression of his beloved clan and the fear of betrayal and loss that he was so used to after all those years of nothing but, he couldn't dare stand it any longer. He left the Hidden Leaf and came up with a plan. He was going to, he was going to come up with the only reality where everyone could be happy. No more death. No more war, no more conflict. With an almighty man orchestrating it all, he fights Hashirama one last time and seemingly allows himself to die. He revives himself with Izanagi and truly begins working on his plan of reconciliation. Madara is a character who thinks he must protect people from themselves, so he does, no matter the bloodshed wars that must take place. Soon they would all end. Despite his seemingly dark intentions, he was belief in the persistence of hatred and his willingness to slaughter, Madara valued happiness, life, and bonds above all else. He was willing to do anything to protect them. What I truly find interesting about Madara is that I think he doesn't enjoy battle in a natural way like the other characters do. It's strange, considering how much emphasis he puts on combat and abilities and powers, but I feel like Madara uses the thrill of the heat of combat to cope. Fighting, combat, and pain are one of the few things he feels now. It makes him wake up from the normally focused, determined, utilitarian idealist who plans to go and save humanity. Right back to the young boy who enjoyed a competition with an equal. The Shinobi Alliance didn't make him feel anything. The Kage didn't make him feel anything. He was so excited to see Hashirama because he was the one of the last people in existence that he knew could make him feel. However, he fights with Hashirama and realizes that Hashirama can no longer make him feel. Hashirama has fallen behind. That's why he lets himself get beaten and he submits. However, the moment his plan is about to kick in, he casually breaks free, steals stage mode, and revives himself. The only person that truly makes him feel like that young kid again and woke up some life inside of Madara was Mike Guy, a man who worked his body to the absolute limit to challenge Madara to the death and could barely do it with assistance. That's why Madara is cheering Kai on and laughing with joy. He hasn't felt like this in ages. He loves it. Then it ends, and Naruto and Sasuke come along. However, they couldn't truly make him feel either. He just notices them, assesses their new abilities, and decides they're just as worth as they were before, and it's time for his plan. Enough stalling. Madara is truly a sad character that hides behind the moon, hides in shadow, because the harsh light of reality was too bright and unhappy for him. Madara is just as much of an idealist as Naruto is and Obito was. He was just born in a different time and with different ideals. Madara is my favorite villain from Naruto because he truly believes he's doing the right thing. And that he was willing to give up what little there is left to feel in the world that his brother lived in. That he lived in. It's sad and I feel bad for him because he's sick and tired of what he views as pointless conflicts born of human nature. And I have to say it, the way Madara was betrayed by Zetsu was bad. It was horrible, in fact, and honestly should not have happened and led to Kaguya. I would have preferred an ideological battle between Madara and Team 7, rather than a beatdown of some random villain to, with no build-up and little character. Madara was an amazing villain who had the proper ideals and reasons to fight Team 7 and go against their ideology, and I wish he just had a more respectable end. His ending was bad, but everything else about the Uchiha of legend was practically perfection incarnate. Hey guys, it's that guy with a pencil. Yeah, so I took a new spin on this breaking the meta. I know no one watches Fiction Fridays where I normally draw stuff, so I decided to take the gimmick here. So, tell me, what do you like more? The edited video, or the stuff of me drawing? Or would you like me to mix them up, as I explain my love for a meta-breaking character? Seriously, please tell me. I like interaction and feedback. It's hard to give you guys what you want if you won't tell me. So like, comment, subscribe, and share. If you really enjoyed the video, have no fear. Share it and like it. If you seriously didn't like it, dislike it. But go in the comments and tell me why. That's my only condition. Anyway, enough outro. This is that guy with the pencil, writing off.